Hi there, it's Sandy here. Today's video is the dual texture stenciling technique. In yesterday's Picket Fence Studio blog hop, I shared three cards created with a swallowtail butterfly stamp, and I received a ton of requests for a video on the second one. So here you go. We will be using the Big Beautiful Swallowtail Stamp, and I black heat emboss this onto a white cardstock 4 by 5 and a half. We're going to use the Fancy Flourishes Stencil. The Snowdrop White Paper Glaze is what I used for the background, and a pointed tipped palette knife. You also need a small stencil brush, painter's tape, post-it note tape, and Gina K ink in Wild Dandelion, Tangerine Twist, and Cherry Red. I protected my work surface with some grid paper and I'm going to secure my heat embossed image onto it and then I'm going to place the stencil over top. I use post-it note tape to hold it in place and this is reusable, that's why you see that there's many other colors on there already. And we're going to be using the painter's tape uh, for the second part of this technique. So I'm going to start by putting the color inside the butterfly wings, starting with the lightest color, of course, and then working my way through to the darkest. So you want to hold the stencil in place with your fingers just to ensure that it doesn't move around and be careful that you stay inside those black lines while you add all of this color. And I'm trying to go as fast as I can and I've also sped this up a tiny little bit. But I wanted you to see the whole technique. And the reason why I'm using that tiny little blending brush is because I need to get right close to the edge on all of that black outline but not going over it because if you go into the background then the ink is going to bleed through on your uh, paper paste when you start the second part of the technique. So just finishing up with the yellow here. Trying to make sure I don't miss any spots. And this stencil is fabulous for getting a great design on the background. It's also kind of abstract. Um, I find that that's a little bit better with this technique because if it's got a definition to it, if you make a mistake, you'll see it right away. So now I have flipped over and I'm adding the tangerine and just pulling it part way out, about halfway, on each of the wings. And I didn't clean my brush because I'm going from a lighter color to a darker color. I clean it at the end with a little bit of soap and water and a wet paper towel. Okay, so switching to the red, and I love this cherry red, it's just the prettiest red. Adding that detail just near the center body of the wings. And once you're finished adding that, you're going to take a dry, in this case Kleenex, and you're going to wipe off any of the ink that is sitting on top of the stencil because we don't want to accidentally pick that up and move it into our glaze for the second step. Now I'm going to take the painter's tape and I'm going to tape off my wings so I don't accidentally get a whole bunch of the paper glaze on them. And the tape doesn't like to stick to the damp stencil, so you want to extend it so that it holds on to the paper and then that will hold it in place for you. So I'm basically protecting the wings and I'm getting my paper glaze out. This is Snowdrop White, and this stuff is beautiful. It's got just a little bit of shine to it, and it's just a really pretty background. Now you see right here why I'm using a pointy palette knife, because I'm going to get right up and close to the antenna, and also to the outside edges, the black embossing on the butterfly. And if you hit it, don't worry about it. I'll show you as soon as we take the stencil off how to fix anything that kind of got on the black. So you've got to be patient here, you've got to work your way around, and you've got to try and fill in as much of that stencil as possible, and then you also have to try and flatten it without getting all of the paste onto the black. So just go slowly and work your way around. In real life I usually flip this. I'm trying not to move it too much for the camera. I would flip it so that it's easier for me to get that point in there. And again, just add a little bit at a time. It's easier to control than a great big gob of it. And you'll see that I'm picking it up for the bottom of the palette knife as well, so I don't have to nail it down and then flip it over. Make sure you get all the way up to the corners. 
Okay, and then clean your palette knife off and go back over, flatten it out, make sure that you've got it all. And then you're going to remove all the tape. And I don't keep, obviously, the painter's tape. That's disposable. I do keep the post-it note tape. I use it for a multitude of different <laughs> techniques. And gently remove that stencil and you want to wash this right away. Okay, so for the little places where you got white, take a pair of tweezers and gently pick up any of the paper glaze. And you want to do this as soon as you can after you take the stencil off because it's easier to move it when it's damp than when it's dry. Once you're all finished, if you still have some white showing, take a thin um, black Sharpie and just cover up any of the white that's showing. And there you go. There's the finished card. Once it's dried, mount it to a top folding black card base and pop a little white inside.